little beast I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get out this day. Hello there. My name is Stuart Ford from Stuart Ford Fitness and Martial Arts Instruction. And uh, if you've just tuned in, this is the first in a four episode uh, series of my free online training um, introductions called Rehab in a Box. I'm doing four of them over four weeks. They're totally free and it's part of my Coach in the Box series. And it's designed as a way for me to show my online service, my online version of my injury therapy and my massage therapy. Obviously I can't do sports massage online physically, um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to be showing you how to self-assess and uh, how to release various muscles with implements, um, hands, tennis balls, foam rolls, uh, stretching techniques, and we're also going to show you how to um, improve your ranges of mov movement and stretch and strengthen those areas as well. Okay, so uh, all these, these uh, various ailments that you might have, uh, injuries that you might have picked up over the years through poor posture, through accidents, um, just tight muscles, um, all of these can be, can be addressed with these similar, similar methods. Okay, so this is uh, Wednesday the 20th of May. So I'll say this is the first of my four part series. It's been broadcasted live on Zoom. Um, but for today's session, uh, it's just me, so no one else has partaken as yet. But hopefully in the next four weeks, um, I'll get some more interest in that. So if uh, you're watching this now and you're still within that time, then, then please try to, uh, to join in with the sessions, either via my website or, my, or contact me from my YouTube channel. Um, if, you're, if it's gone past that, then you'll be able to view these on my YouTube channel as a pre-recorded video. Okay. So uh, I'm going to put on some music and then we're going to get started. Um, right, so what we're going to focus on, we've got, we've got, so we've got four episodes, so what I want to do is I want to address a particular sort of area, issue of the body in each episode. They might kind of cross over a little bit and I'm not exactly sure how, how uh, far we'll get through each one. Um, we've got 45 minutes for each of these series, of these episodes. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that pans out. So the first one that we've got is going to be related to a posterior chain issue. And when I say posterior chain, I'm talking about the back of your body, okay? Um, and this can be all the way from the head down to the foot, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus a bit more specifically on the lower back and down through the legs. Okay, so the back, hips, and then following all the way down through the legs. Um, this may well be an issue that you're, you've been experiencing, um, and if not, possibly will do at some point, and many people do. So quite common. Um, we're also going to be looking at this on a what we call a sagittal plane, so that's from back to front, okay, straight line through your body, rather than a sort of a lateral thing, which we may cross into later. Um, so what, what can we get, what, what problems can we get with the back of our body? Well, we can, to start with, we've got the, the buttocks. We can get pain in the buttock area. We can get pain in the back. We can get pain in the hamstrings, pain in the calves. Quite often, these are linked uh, in, intrinsically, you know, from one to another. Which one starts first? With, you know, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's always difficult to say. And it's always difficult to pinpoint the particular reasons uh, of, of what's happening, how it started, and maybe even the actual particular place that, that, that needs addressing. But what we can do is we can address a lot of the muscles in that same line. So we're talking about musculoskeletal issues. Uh, so we can, we can address muscles within the same line and find out which ones we may think are, are, are causing these issues. We can address pretty well all of them and we can teach those muscles how to work again because they, they often forget. Uh, one of the big reasons for this nowadays, especially with the issues that we're talking about around the back and the lower, the lower part of the body, is, is what we do most of the day nowadays, which tends to be this. Sitting on our butts, not doing very much at all. Poor postures, slumping, relaxed tummy muscles, yeah, it means that the, uh, the abdominals aren't working very, very well. 
or, or at all. <laughs> Maybe we've got a back in our chair so we can rest back into a chair. Then the tummy can definitely kind of switch off or the muscles can just sag, yeah, which means that the, the vertebra all kind of end up knocking down together, impinging on nerves and, and things like that. Um, and then what else happens? So that the, the, the position that we're in here means that we get tight issues, tight muscles. We get tight in the hip flexors here because they're shortened. We get tight in the, the back of the knee here, the hamstrings, the calves, because the knee's bent all the time. The buttocks at the back, are they, are they in a shortened position or are they in a lengthened position? Well, they're in a lengthened position, aren't they? Because they're, they're stretching forwards. They're not as far as they can necessarily go, but they're in a stretched position. And we're sitting on it as well, which is like a, a compression into that muscle, which we, we might address, we might do a similar thing with using something like a foam roll and massage to squash the muscle out, muscle out and stretch it. We're doing that maybe, you know, eight hours a day here. Um, in, in any sense so and then what happens is we get we get these tight muscles we get muscles that are lengthened and whether they're in a shortened state all the time whether they're in a lengthened state all the time they're becoming dysfunctional okay? so they're forgetting what is their neutral so maybe in a, a stood up position your buttocks might find their neutral um, state of flexion or contraction um, <clears throat> or stretch and the same with your hamstring so the joints are now in a more neutral line that we're spending more time you know, in, in, a, in a neutral position and then at the same time maybe we can be moving around which means these 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 joints and muscles all get to work and move and they get to change their length tension relationships more frequently so this is very important this is what the body is designed to do so we need to try to address these issues and see if we can do anything about that. So let's put our prop away for a second. <clears throat> so prop, props you could use for these training sessions or for um, helping yourself in general. Some kind of a, um, a lift like we just had there with a the stool. Uh, something around knee height <clears throat> that we can rest on. We can place a, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> we can place a limb on too. We've got, um, a little step here, a little step up we could use. Okay, I can put this to various heights, or you could use any kind of a step or at the bottom of a, a stairs perhaps. <clears throat> foam rolls, we're talking about exercise foam rolls. Very handy pieces of equipment. This one here has had many years of use. And this is a, a Reebok foam roll, orange, and um, that's colour coded for their density. And, um, and I find that this one is just, it's not too hard, not too soft. Um, it's certainly a good starting place. And then you get other foam rolls, like this rumble roller with little nobbles on them. It's like an instrument of torture, I know, but they're actually little cushioned nobbles. So um, they're not as bad as they look. And uh, so they give a little more localised pressure. <clears throat> Another thing I've got here is a, a tennis ball. And um, you can use any kind of uh, similar looking sort of similar size ball, a little bit of firmness, but not too hard. Okay, so this is gonna help as well. Um, yeah, so that will about do for now. So we've got some things there. If you haven't got a foam roll, you can always get yourself a towel, fold it over, roll it up nice and tight, and then that will be a good start. You can maybe put a rolling pin inside that and roll it over to give that more pressure. Right, so back to what we were talking about, where we're gonna start with uh, posterior chain. Um, so well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look at sort of self-assessing. This gives us a chance to, to just check in, find out what's going on with our body. <clears throat> is, it, is it working properly? We might have a, a tightness. I think I've possibly got a, <clears throat> a slip disc on my left side back here um, between some of the vertebrae, a little disc bulge. It gives me some pain from, top, from time to time. I've got to be careful with that. Um, so that's my all of my little issues or other things I've, I've accumulated over the year with training uh, and things which I didn't know how to do very well in, back in my heyday. Um, okay, so think about where you're aching. Generally, people get some kind of a pain in their lower back. Sometimes it comes into some kind of a sciatica thing where it's going down the buttocks, the outer uh, hamstrings and legs coming down. You can come all the way down to the... the uh, the, the ankle and foot. 
So we've got to look at are there any tight muscles that's, that's giving those that could uh, uh, give rise to those those symptoms? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend myself forwards. So I'm arching my back and I'm, I'm stretching basically everything in this posterior chain. So the, ha the calves, the hamstrings, the buttocks to an extent and all the way around the spine or up to the head. I think, is there anything here particularly tight at the moment? I'm not going to feel anything. Now, usually, I get a bit of um, weak buttock issues. I talked about problems with what areas, you know, what, what happens when you get these weaknesses and tightnesses. A lot of people, and this is quite a common thing, their buttocks become weak and they're, they're, they're immobile, and dysfunctional because you spend so much time sitting on them. So uh, they become, and they'll become flaccid as well. That means that they're not doing their job. So if I'm leaning forwards here to pick something up or just with my body weight, my buttocks are doing very little maybe to help me to get up and down. So I've been spending a long time trying to work my glutes to try to switch them on, so glutes, buttocks, trying to switch them on and get more work out of them. Yeah? And that can take a long time to do if you spent a long time not doing it and this has become inset like a thought pattern in the body. Okay, so we look at where it's tight, and if the buttocks aren't working very well, well that can mean that your back and your hamstrings do more work than they should do. And this is why a lot of people end up with tight hamstrings, tight calves as well, tight back. Something's got to go, you know, so, so, something's got to give, because it, it's not, something in the chain isn't working properly. So, when I bend forward, I can feel my back a little bit here, I feel the buttocks, the hamstrings, a little bit on the calves. I trained my buttocks two days ago, um, did some deadlift exercising, and they are pretty sore at the moment, I can tell you, so I know everything that we're going to do here is going to affect that area for me. Okay, so if I just come down to the floor here, I've got my, my soft foam roll, so I'm just going to start with the calves. So I'm going to place the, the leg on top here, I can place the other leg on top as well to give a little bit of cushioning, a little bit of weight, sorry, a little bit of extra pressure. And all I'm really doing is I'm squashing that muscle between the foam wall here and the, the bone, the, the shin muscle, uh, the, the, the shin bone inside. I can lift myself off the floor as well to put some extra weight on there. Now, a lot of people struggle with these uh, positions, particularly picking yourself up. You don't have to lift yourself up. Alternative versions of this could be, I can put my elbows on the floor and lift my buttocks up. Here, I can put my back on the floor and lift my buttocks up. Okay, so either way I'm putting more pressure onto that calf. I can move it around a little bit, but what I'm doing to start with really is I'm just going up and down the calf, this brings back a little bit, just to try to find any particular tight areas. Then I can spend more time focusing on one particular area. Okay, so I'm just rolling that round a little bit, loosening that up. I can point the foot, plantar flex, <coughs> dorsiflex, lifting the ankle up and down, the foot up and down, and I'm going to do the same with the other side as well. Okay, so always good so to start with your your release first of all. If I was treating a client with massage, then or therapy to try to release a tight muscle, I'll be starting with some kind of massage on that muscle to start with. So first of all, we've got to try to address these length tension relationships. We're making short muscles longer and more stretchy. And we're making long muscles shorter by working those. Okay, so it's also that we're shortening a lengthened muscle with exercise. But at the end of the day, those muscles are all dysfunctional. So ones that are short, can also be tight, ones that are long can also be tight, and, and both dysfunctional. So if we, if we can stretch and manipulate all of those and exercise all of those, then we're just addressing those dysfunctions, teaching the body how to work again. But it's always good to start with loosening so that we can try to prepare the joints uh, so that they've got more range of movement in those joints, there's less restriction, and it's going to be easier for you to 
use the antagonizing muscle to contract. If you've got an opposing muscle that's short, okay, so I'm on the hamstrings now. Again, just moving it around. Now, often when people get to, the, to doing the hamstrings, they find this a difficult one as well because it's harder to lift up. So what I've got here is just a couple of uh, little push-up uh, rests, push-up bars. So you can use anything, some kind of, uh, some books or something, just to lift your hands higher off the floor so you can get more on top here. Now I'm trying as best as I can to relax the hamstrings. Again, people struggle getting those hamstrings to stretch. So I'm just moving up and down, finding the worst area. Again, I can do various versions. I can dorsiflex the foot as so I move forwards to stretch the back line of the leg. And you're kind of pinning and stretching the muscle as you go. Okay, and then I'm changing on to the other side here. You can turn the leg more to the outside, so I'm hitting more of the outer leg, biceps femoris muscle. And you can roll it more to the, the medial part, the inner part of the back of the thigh. And then we're hitting the other hamstring muscles, semimembranosis, tendinosis. And quite often I'd always start with these uh, stretches in the morning before I get into my exercise routine or whenever you're going to start your exercise routine. I'm always addressing these issues to some extent just to make sure that when I actually start my exercise plan my body's already preparing for it. So not only is this going to stretch the muscle if it's a, an already stretched muscle, you're going to be pummeling those muscle fibers a bit and just getting them used to working. It's a bit like somebody exercising for you to start with without the, uh, the safety hazards of putting load and things into your, those already affected muscles, joints. Um, okay, so they feel a little bit loose now. So that those aches and tenderness that I started with, they subsided to an extent. Okay, that's where you want to get to. It's not necessarily going to go away entirely, but it's going to get you to a better spot. Okay, so I can then go on to a stretch with that. So I, I'd like to do a stretch at this point, for specifically my, my legs, um, before it's, you've left it too long after you've used the foam roll there. So I'll go to my left leg first of all, just the first one that I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my hand onto my, my right knee and just Put my foot forward just a slight amount, it doesn't have to go very far, far forward. You could just stay on the spot and you could just bring the, um, the hip back. So I straighten the left leg, you can pull up the toes as well, and this is going to hit the, the calf and the hamstring at the same time. Okay, or you could have this forward slightly, that just depends on your flexibility. Okay, so I'm just going through that stretch there. different versions of that. Again, I can sway my weight off to the right side. If I show you that from the, the front, sway my weight off to the right side. I'm kind of pulling then on the inside of the hamstring a little bit more there. And turn the leg. Okay, if I turn the foot off to the outside here, it's hitting the inside of the hamstring a bit more there. If I turn it inwards, I'm hitting the outside of the hamstring more. And I can also push the hip off out to the... This is one of the, the best stretches which i found um, to really get to, to the, the buttock muscles as well as the hamstrings, is to just to kick that the hip off out to the outside there. Okay. That's good, that's feeling more stretch there. So this is called a static stretch. Static stretches we generally do for 20, 30 seconds minimal. And but that's um, a rule of thumb, you know, you can chop and change the length of time you spend in it 
what's what most important is that you feel like you've got somewhere through that stretch and that you've made, you, you've made an achievement. Okay, so to the right leg, doing the same thing here. Just pushing the buttock back there. Show you from the side here, so on the basic hamstring stretch, you um, arch the back. So it's not a rounded back at all here, this is like a lordotic spine you're making here to lift the buttocks up in the air. So this is, means that you're pulling the hamstring from the top here. And as I lift the foot up, you're pulling the hamstring from the bottom. So you're pulling it from, from two different places. I say the bottom, of course, bottom part of the hamstring, not my butt. So you're pulling it from two different places. And I'm just going to go through the similar kind of stretches again. I'm going to stick my butt off to the left hand side. I'll show you from the front here. Stick my butt off to the left and turn the toes out. And I'm just kind of hitting this medial part of the hamstring muscles a bit more here. And I can turn the foot in, I can kick the, the butt out to the right side here. Okay, good. So I feel like they're much more stretched now. They ache a little bit. You just ease through it. Don't, don't do it too fast, you know, don't do it too... too um, too much vigor, take your time with it. Stretch it, feel a little bit good as well as a little bit painful. Okay, let's put this off to the side. Right, so what's next? So we've done the hamstrings, we've done the calves to an extent. We could do a bit more on the calves. So to hit the calves a little bit harder, I can hit a more specific calf stretch here. So I'm just stepping forwards until my anchor at the back is reached its kind of maximum flexion forwards so that's being hit okay so I already get into a reasonably good position with that then I can just slightly lead forwards on the front with the front knee this is hitting the gastrocnemius muscle the, the, the main calf muscle which runs from the crosses the, the back of the knee and the ankle so we're stretching both of those uh, both ends of those Okay, and then change and do the same thing on the other side here. Try to make sure that both your feet are facing uh, parallel, they're both parallel with each other, so they're both facing forwards. A little turn out or turn in of the foot will drastically change how that's stretching the muscles. Okay, sometimes people get the, the lower part of the calf more, the soleus muscle, the major calf muscles I'm talking about here, tends to be tighter. And we can hit that with a bent knee calf stretch. So I can just flex the knee, sit down to the back leg a little bit like this, and then just try to relax that ankle joint and make sure that this is happening low down. So if you feel it lower down into the, towards the ankle joint here. Okay, just change. I could spend longer doing these, but I'm not going to spend too long on those. And just sit that into it, relaxing that ankle joint. Okay, good. So that's uh, massage work or self muscular release covered from the calf all the way up to the hamstring here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the, the, the buttocks a, bit, a little bit um, closer. Sit myself down. It's a good way we can do that. You can lie yourself back onto the floor here. Just kick the, the foot over the knee. And then you can use the leg lift of the left leg. So I've got my left legs, this one here of course. Lifting up and pushing up on my right leg. Just to feel this main large area of the butter with it is that is that tight yeah then you can also put a little bit of pressure against your knee here bringing that across the body and of course i'll say my buttocks are already tight from my exercise regime a couple of days ago so i knew this was gonna gonna be hitting okay so i'm pulling this in i can feel that and then checking in the other one here as well Checking the different angles. 
Okay, so before I get too carried away with stretching those, I've got two things I can use. Again, I can use the foam roll here. Always a good thing to start with the foam roll because it's not quite as localised. So you can just sit yourself onto one, one sheet like this. You can just use it in this fashion. So I could just rock over from one side to the next, listening to those areas, roll up and down on the foam roll. And you could even do this just sitting on the floor. It depends how tight your muscles are. Some people do this kind of thing on a foam roll and it's just too painful for them, even if you've got something that's very, very soft foam roll. So I'm just working that around, listening to those tight areas. Yeah. Um, the more you stretch the buttock here now, because it's nice and relaxed as well, the more you're going to find that you can almost feel the, the blood releasing through the buttock. stingy pain which doesn't last too long so I'm just going up and down inside and outside then you've got so many muscles in the buttock area just trying to pinpoint which one particular area it is it's very difficult to do so just in a broad sense thinking where's the pain it's much simpler Okay, so you can work through that. So there's both sides done. With the foam roll. And then I can get a little bit more familiar with it and use a ball. So I just do a similar kind of a thing. So I could just start by lying myself down. And put this underneath the buttock. I oh, know roughly where the most tender spots are because I've felt those already with the foam roll. So now I'm getting that on the buttock, just moving that around. The glute max is more towards the back and it runs out to the side and then follows down, attaches onto the outer leg here. And then the glute mead on the side here. Is another issue that we'll probably cover, but maybe in the next session. It's good, and then again, I can always progress. So you can regress and progress. It depends how uh, again how tight and painful the area is for you, and what you can cope with. Okay, so there's that one. And then same thing back on the other side, just clearing the section, resting over, just starting with the leg down, searching around. Apart from the muscles, you've also got the ligaments, sacrotuberous ligament, a very important ligament running all the way down the back of the sacrum and the hips, which attaches down onto your outer hamstring. And if the ligaments are, well, if the muscles are tight, the ligaments are going to be tight. If the ligaments are tight, the muscles are going to be tight. Now, if something in that chain's tight, then everything else in there is going to have to be tight as well, because the joint is in a shortened position. Or maybe one's become tight because the other one's loose. In the case of the buttocks, you know, he's trying to explain how it works. Again, sometimes it's difficult to, to try to pinpoint that. Okay, so that's feeling good. What's better is that we just do something about it. Okay, so I've now loosened that off nicely. Where does that leave me? My back. Okay, so I come all the way up to the buttocks here. Ah, but before we go onto the back, let's just stretch those buttocks a bit more. So come back to this first one we did again. Again, I don't spend too long. just as a, a showing purpose. So I can use a stretch like this here. Some people might struggle to get the leg up to here. So a different version you could possibly do of that. You can get into this position and you can rest forwards onto the leg here. The more you can get this leg back and underneath you, 
the more you can stretch that bottom. So, to come back, if I come off of the camera here. Okay, so the more you can sit into this like this. And another version that I like as well is to cross the leg over the top here. Yeah, this stretches the one below and the one on top. And I can do various things with the hips here. I can press down with the knee here, which does external rotation of my hip. Or I can pull it across here, which is doing internal rotation of my hip. Very complex muscle, the buttock. Is it an external rotator? Is it an internal rotator? Well, that depends on what height the uh, what flexion you've got in your hips. So I'm not going to get too deep into that because I might cause a stir as well. There'll be various opinions on that. Okay, so I've stretched out to here. So now the last thing I've got to do is my back. Okay. The back's often the one that takes a lot of the, the brunt, but if we loosen all these areas off to start with, you're stopping those from pulling down the back and causing issues when you're trying to flex forwards. So again, I can start with a foam roll, lay yourself down, foam roll underneath your lower back, and then I can just move that around, drop the knees from side to side, and let that stretch out. When I'm done with the foam roll, tennis ball, place it off to one side of your spine into the soft tissue. So here we're really looking at the erector spinae muscles, which are running up um, uh, parallel with the spine on either side, and they're kind of the main protruding um, humps, which go up like a lobes, if you like. <clears throat> Okay, you can also come at them slightly side on, so if you tilt to the side slightly, and that gets nicely into the side of the vertebra, the facet joints, and the ligaments, which are really attaching those together, and all the various layers of muscle there, here, off to the other side as well. Good. <clears throat> okay, so after we've addressed all those muscles, now we've massaged those, what am I missing here? Stretching of course, different ways you can stretch your back, I can place the arms out to the side, I can drop the leg over, great way to stretch your, your uh, lumbar area, and all of your rectus spinae muscles, lats, multifidi, which are rotating muscles in the spine. Okay, so we've got that there. And one of my favorites, okay, is this. So we, we have all these stretches that uh, we learn over the years, for fitness professionals especially, um, very set ways of doing them. But at the end of the day, stretching is personal. And this is about you finding a way of stretching a particular line of muscle fibers, which maybe you haven't got to before. And I'm, I'm a believer now in this, this idea that it, if, you have, if you can't stretch a muscle fibers, you can't get to some muscle fibers that, uh, or ligaments that have been causing you problems, you haven't found the right stretch for them yet. Okay, so there's always a way to stretch a particular area. It's just finding that here. So I'm just letting the buttocks drop down here, turn under. So I'm stretching my spine around the back here. I'm all the way over it as well, rounding it over. And I can focus one side or another. If I place a hand across here, I'll sort of just change my position slightly for you. Over to one side. And I can lift the shoulder in the air as well. And I can kind of sit into that left leg and slump that. That's going to stretch it. I can 
lift the hand over the head here, which is stretching some other muscles a bit more, in my, my lat a bit more, latissimus dorsi, you know, muscles that run down the side here, running a different way of stretching them. Now, I'm not particularly trying to hit those muscles in this, um, in this uh, episode, but I'm trying to hit more so the muscles that go up in a straight line following the spine up, more vertical. Okay, so I'm doing the same now with my right side here by just changing the angle over. Okay, great. So I've got those all well stretched. Now what we want to do is we want to start teaching those muscles how to work again. And I want to do those in a nice, relaxed fashion without putting too much load onto the muscles. You know, if I go, uh, go straight into some kind of resistance now, um, or, or heavy resistance exercising, those stretch muscles that aren't used to being hyper stretched, are, are in, a, in a way they're in a more dangerous position because they're, they're not used to being in those stretch positions. They used to be maybe shorter and working in a, in a shorter position where they feel safer. Now they've, they've been elongated more so. So they're a bit freer. So we've got to be careful to start, which is what, why we warm up. You know, it's the same sort of thing, but here we're doing it on a, a more um, regressed and intricate level. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start just moving my hips and this is a great one to start with, it's called uh, cog or sagittal cog um, or my version of that and what we're doing is we're looking at how the body works forwards and back in a natural sense um, and, and specifically target the hips and they're all starting with the hips and you'll see why they're called cogs as well now. So if I start from facing the front, <clears throat> I've got my feet hip width apart toes facing forwards, legs are straight, there's no knee bending in this exercise. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, if I put my trousers from see my knees over here, I'm going to rotate my knees inwards. Now as I'm doing that, if I turn side on that to show you here, I'm also lifting my buttock at the back, which means I anteriorly tilt my pelvis forwards. Okay, so it's forwards and uh, tilt the pelvis. So I tilt my pelvis forwards, I can feel this hyperflexion in the lower spine, lower spine here, in the lumbar area. Okay, And you're rotating your legs in. What this does, it brings the hips together at the front, and but more importantly opens them out at the back. Okay, So you're opening the um, um, SI joints at the back, the sacroiliac joints, yeah, where you're, you're Ilia, your hip bones join onto your sacrum. So as I tilt forwards, they open up, and this is naturally how the body works. At the same time as I do that, I'm gonna stick out the chest, bring the shoulders back, and I've turned the palms now to face forwards. Okay, so those are first positions. So I try to get all these points in, in place. If you forget the rest of these, then let's start from the lower section and get this anterior tilt first, and the legs rolling in. The feet also here have flattened, they've pronated, so they've collapsed in, okay? So from here, I'm going to now tuck the bottom under and do the reverse. So the first one was a spine contraction, and then I'm gonna tuck the bottom under, and I'm gonna stretch the back here, okay? Then I'm just gonna bring it back again, and then scoop the bottom underneath. Okay, just face the front again. <clears throat> so as I go backwards, the legs roll in, the back's arched, my hips are tilted forwards, so I've got a, a curve in my back. <clears throat> when I tuck the bottom under, my legs are doing the opposite, they are wrapping outwards. Okay, then I go back with the hips, and then I go under with the hips. Back with the hips, Stretch the chest out, chin down to chest, tuck the hips under, and the chin can go up. Let's go back to the first ones, turn side on, <clears throat> so you can see the arch in the back. Then I scoop the bottom under, and as I do that, the legs are wrapping outwards. The arches of the feet are now lifting, so it's this now a supination of the foot. So my arches of the feet are lifting as my legs turn out. And I round my back. I'm going to try to round it as much as I can. Start gently with these exercises. 
and then slowly build up the range of movement that you put into them. So now in a sagittal plane, that's forwards and back. I'm moving, although I'm not moving forwards, but this is naturally how the body works in gait as we walk. And you're getting all those joints to open and close. Okay, great way to start. And just feel that as you do it. So it's like a little journey into yourself as you're doing those kind of exercises. <clears throat> Don't expect anything in particular. Just have a little go, breathe, relax into it, and try to gradually increase that range of motion as you go. Okay, so the next one is, so now we've kind of lubricated the joints, and you could, you could do 10, 20, 30 repetitions of that, however many it felt like, until stiff areas feel like they're starting to loosen and, 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 and change their position. So then from there I'm going to go on to what I call a hinge. So a hinge really is just like a deadlift in our exercise terms. We have a slight soften of the knees, the feet are hip width apart, toes facing forwards, a slight soften of the knees but then the rest of it all comes in the hips here. Now mostly I find that a lot of people really struggle to do this. Well some people manage it but a lot of people they just hinge at their back. So they've done all their exercise and their movement from their lumbar area here. Their hips aren't used to doing this. They find this very difficult to do. But all we're doing is just dropping forwards. The knees softened, the back stays straight. So I can feel now those buttocks stretch, the hamstrings stretch a bit, the knee bend just alleviates the hamstrings and gets the buttocks to stretch. So we know that if the buttocks now are in a stretch position and they're loaded up, when I come up I can squeeze the buttocks and the buttocks are going to work to bring you back up. So dropping yourself down and have a little bit of tension in the buttocks as you go. So the buttocks are kind of lowering you down as well as bringing you back up. Lowering you down and bringing you back up. Lowering you down and bringing you back up. We can add in a little bit of an extra movement here. The arms lifting up at the same time. So this is stretching our lats and working our back here as well, our back musculature to draw our shoulders back and over our body. So when we come down, we kind of work from two different angles and it's all the posterior chain. So the back's working, the front stretching, or the front or the back stretching, and then the front is, uh, is working, but it's not so much under pressure. Okay, so as we go forwards, we can roll the legs inwards again and flatten the feet so they pronate. Pronation, if you don't know, is just flattening of the arches of your feet. And then as I come up, I can think about my legs externally rotating just like we did to start with. And the buttocks squeezing, I can bring the arms back, down, and back up. And we're just teaching the body here how to do basic movements might not seem basic to you if this is new to you but trust me this is things the body should be able to do well down and back up again good okay so we've then got the, the muscles working with a bit more tension a bit more under pressure so now what I'm going to do to finish on this exercise here is I'm going to do a more fluid movement so I call these throws so it's a bit more of a not a power exercise because it's still slow but it's dynamic and more of a dynamic exercise it's not so one jointed so now i'm going to get all of the posterior chain to work in the same at the same time so again i've got this kind of default thing is my feet are hip width apart my toes are facing forwards now i'm going to have again a little soften of the knees here and i'm going to intentionally slump the back because now i want the spine to be working in this exercise as well and I'm coming down towards the floor here, as low as you feel comfortable to go. Think about kind of just picking up a, a ball here, like a football, lifting it up over the head. And then I'm going to lean back and I can get my abdominals to work here as well. And I can round and start the back again, sinking down, pick up that ball and coming back up. So now we can add into that some of the things we were doing to start with that's caving the legs inwards flattening the arches of the feet so they pronate when we come down and then as we come up we're squeezing the glutes and we're externally rotating our legs so our knees are turning outwards 
And then we can come back as far as you can, opening up the arms, back down again, picking up the ball, squeezing the buttocks. So let's get those buttocks working. Although we've got the back working, we always want the buttocks to be our kind of centre of our universe here. Yeah. So squeeze them a bit as you drop down, feel them under pressure, and squeeze them as you come back up again. Opening up and leaning back. And again, you can just do as many of these as you feel you need to, to increase that range of motion. Try to look behind you, to the wall behind. Down. Up. Or back. Yeah, this exercise taken from a, a chick on, really. Um, an exercise sometimes called carrying the moon for youthfulness. And uh, I think that's basically what they're saying is you can do that movement into your old age and you're going to keep a good healthy spine, a good strong spine. OK, well, that is the end of our uh, little session today. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> if not, sorry about that, but <laughs> I'm new to this as well. So I'm learning as I go. And this is about the, the first one I've done of these episodes. Um, so again, we've got another one. If, you've j if you're in time now, to, if, well, if you've tuned in, and you're within date around this date you can uh, you can watch the next one which is uh, in a week's time again on the wednesday and then there's going to be another two after that so there's four of them all together and i say if not then this would be on youtube so you can always just catch the pre-recorded video and um yeah so uh hope to see you for the next one just get in touch with me you've got my um email address which you'll find in the link here at the, at the, the end of this page and also uh in the description um, so you've got a website you can go and view that's uh, um, Stuart Ford Fit or FMAI for fitness and martial arts instruction so that's Stuart Ford FMAI.co.uk and uh, and you can view, view all of the, uh, the things that I do from there and, uh, and again they'll be on this YouTube channel so uh, another thing is of course if you can uh, click a subscribe on my, my YouTube channel I think that will always be helpful well, that's right here okay so nice to see you oh nice to see me <laughs> and i'm bye for now